JPA Buddy is an IntelliJ IDEA plugin that helps developers to work efficiently with Hibernate and Eclipse Link, Spring Data JPA, Flyway and Liquibase, Lombok, Mapstruct, and other related technologies in both Java and Kotlin. The plugin is intended to make it easier to get started with JPA and related technology, boost productivity for developers of all grades, and make sure that the generated code follows best practices and will not fail at runtime. JPA Buddy delivers intuitive wizards to work with JPA objects, JPA entities, Spring Data JPA repositories, Liquibase change logs, SQL files, and others. Automatic database migration scripts generation for both Flyaway and Liquibase, smart inspections to make the code better, JPA entities generation based on tables, that is, reverse engineering, and Visual DTO designer and mapper code generator. You can use the plugin in any project with Spring Boot, Jakarta Enterprise Edition, Quarkus, Micronaut, or even without any framework. JPA Buddy is recognized by hundreds of thousands of Java developers, including Java rock stars and champions. The plugin is one of the most loved by IntelliJ IDEA users. Visit our website to find out how JPA Buddy can assist you and make you even more productive. Now we're going to show it in action. In this video, we'll use JPA Buddy and IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate to create a simple but fully working project management service. This service will store data about users' assignments to projects and tasks and expose a REST API for projects management and search. It'll take about 15 minutes to implement this service. Let's assume that we have an existing database and now we need to build an application using this data. The database has two tables, user and project. The project table contains complete information about a project, its name, start and end dates, and reference to a user, its manager. The user table contains essential data only, username and password. We'll start the application development by creating entities from the existing database tables. Then we'll extend the user entity by adding the email attribute to it. For the application, we'll need a new entity, task. After we create it, we'll generate migration scripts to synchronize the changes in the JPA model with the database using JPA Buddy. To implement the REST API, we'll create DTOs and Spring Data repositories to use them in REST controllers. Let's start creating a Spring Boot application with the Spring Framework Starter website. We'll use Java 17, Gradle as the build tool, and the latest stable Spring Boot version. The application will be deployed as a JAR package. Also, let's use meaningful names for the application. For the application, we'll need the following libraries. Spring Data JPA to use JPA and data repositories in the application. Hibernate Validator to enable data validation for the entities, PostgreSQL Driver for database access, Flyway as a database versioning tool, and Spring Web to create REST endpoints. JPA Buddy detects libraries attached to the project and enables the corresponding features. For example, Entity Attributes Validation won't be available if you don't have the Hibernate Validator library in the project's class path now, let's download, unpack the project, and open it in the IntelliJ IDEA. For the application, we'll need mapping framework to convert entities to DTOs and vice versa. For our application, we'll use Mapstruct. When we open a new blank application, we usually ask ourselves, how do we create entities? Which annotations should I specify for entities? And how do we create DB migration scripts? JPA Buddy plugin will assist you with answering those questions. Let's install JPA Buddy plugin from the IntelliJ Marketplace. Start typing the plugin name in the search field. Select and install the plugin. You can see the JPA Structure Tool window at the left side. It'll help you deal with the JPA subsystem in your project. Let's set up a DB connection with the help of JPA Buddy 
and update the application configuration file. Enter the server address, database username, and password. Please note that in your local environment, values may be different. JPA Buddy provides a useful intention to add data source connection data to the application properties file. Use the IntelliJ IDEA Show Context Actions shortcut and select the Data Source menu. Choose the connection, set the Hibernate DDL Auto property to Validate, and select the Hibernate Show SQL checkbox. Since we have existing tables in the database, we need to prevent the flyway from failure when we run migrations for the first time. Let's specify the baseline on migrate property in the application config to do this. We have a database connection and we're ready to create entities. First, we need to create user and project entities based on the existing database tables. Select the Entities from Database option in the wizard. Define a new package, Entities, to store new classes and pick the Project table. JPA Buddy suggests attribute types based on table column definitions. Select the Manager ID Reference column. JPA Buddy automatically selects the related table. Let's import all columns for this table. Also, JPA Buddy allows us to create a reference from users to their projects. It's not defined in the database, but looks right for the JPA data model. Please note that the JPA Buddy detects ID type, identity for our case. Here we go. Let's modify the user entity. We'll add a column to store an email address for each user. The JPA Designer Tool window has two sections, JPA Palette and JPA Inspector. Palette provides code components that we can create in the current context, while Inspector is designated to edit an existing code. Let's use JPA Palette to add a new basic attribute to the entity. Double-click or drag-and-drop the basic type element and specify the email name for the attribute. We need to set a validation rule for this attribute. Let's do it with the JPA Inspector. The user entity is ready. Now, let's move to the project entity. For those who prefer keyboard shortcuts over tool windows or want to save screen space, JPA Buddy provides a minimalistic mode. Let's enable it and enjoy a clean screen with project structure and code only. Now, actions are available in standard IntelliJ IDEA windows, such as Project Panel, Generate Menu, and so on. Also, you can find the most frequently used actions in the Editor Toolbar on top of the Editor window. Now we need to create the Task Entity. Open the Generate menu and select the Create Referenced Entity action. The Project Entity is the aggregation route for our data model, so choose the One to Many Reference Type from the Task Entity. To assign IDs for the tasks, we'll use an Identity Data Type. Now define the rest of the attributes, name, start date, end date, and the assignee user. Let's also enable cascade operations for the tasks to update the whole entity graph at once. With JPA Buddy, we can generate database versioning scripts based on a difference between the current database schema and the existing JPA data model. We have an existing database instance, but we should be able to create this database from scratch. 
This is essential for the new development environment setup, testing, and so on. To achieve this, we need to create an initialization script for the existing database. Basically, it's the first version of the application database. In the Project panel, select the Flyway Init Migration. Choose the source type DB and select the existing connection. Just a note for Liquibase users. JPA Buddy supports all features shown in this video for Liquibase as well. The initialization script is ready and we can view it in the JPA Buddy Migration Wizard window. Since we've defined the baseline on migrate property earlier, Flyway will execute migration scripts starting from the version 2. It means that the initialization script name should start with v1 and we'll give it the name baseline migration. When we run the migration process on a new database, Flyway will check the baseline on migrate property and execute the version 1 script only if the target database is empty. Otherwise, it will start with the version 2 script. Now we can generate database migration scripts for JPA model changes. We'll use model as a source for comparison and database as a target. We can have a look at the SQL and execute some migrations if needed before saving files. Apart from the generated scripts, we can also create migration scripts manually. Let's create an initial data for the application, a sample project with a manager and a couple of tasks. Now we can move on to REST API development. Let's create a new package, controllers, and class project controller in it. To transform a plain Java class into a REST controller, we need to annotate it with the REST controller annotation. First, we'll create a get method handler to search the project by name and return a DTOs list. The handler will accept the project name in the URL as a path parameter. In the method body, we'll pass the parameter value to the repository and convert the result into DTOs. So far, we don't have a Spring Data JPA repository to get projects from a database, nor a DTO class to narrow the number of fields to be exposed. But with JPA Buddy, we can create both of them right from here. JPA Buddy detects that unresolved reference is a candidate for DTO class and provides a corresponding quick fix. It shows us a DTO designer window. Let's create a package for DTOs. In the REST API, we'll expose the following project data. ID, name, manager, and tasks. For the manager and tasks, we'll create separate DTOs. After that, we need to create a mapper class for the project DTO, Project Mapper. Let's put the mapper into a separate package, Mappers. Here we go. All DTOs have been generated as well as a map struct mapper. Now, let's deal with the Spring Data JPA repository. We don't need to switch focus, so let's just start typing a repository name. Wow, we didn't even finish typing the repository name, and JPA Buddy already suggests that we create it. That's fantastic. Let's specify a dedicated package, repositories. Here we go. JPA Buddy has generated the proper Spring Data JPA repository and its injection. The next thing we need is a method to search for projects by name. Again, we don't need to open another editor. Just start typing a desired method name. JPA Buddy allows us to call query visual designers right here. We need to find a method that returns a collection of entities. The method should return a list. To create a proper name, select the name attribute and is operator. 
the search will be case sensitive. That's it. Finally, we need to map the result to a list of DTOs, and JPA Buddy shows us all available mapping options. To speed up the search, we need to alter the database schema and add an index for the project table and name column. Don't forget to generate a migration script for the index creation. The next API method is the post handler that saves a project. We pass a project description in JSON format in the request body to the method and return the saved instance. And the last method is the post handler, which updates an existing project. First, we need to verify that the past DTO contains the ID value or that the project with this ID exists. If we cannot find the project, we throw an exception. If the project exists, we just update it using the information passed in the DTO and then return a new DTO with the updated project data. Now we're ready to test our application and we'll use the IntelliJ IDEA web client to do it. Let's create a new project using the REST API. We have an endpoint to search for the project by its name and we can use it to find the project we've just created. Now we can update the project. In the DTO, we'll pass only the project ID and new field values for one of the tasks. Let's make the search API call again and ensure that the changes have been applied. That's it. Now we have a fully functional application with REST API and JPA. In this video, we've created a CRUD Spring Boot service for projects and tasks management using IntelliJ IDEA and JPA Buddy. Thank you for watching.